Welcome back to Stuff About Money They Didn't Teach You in School. I'm Xavier Angel, Certified Financial Planner, and this is Eric Garcia, Certified Financial Planner. Good morning. How good you morning. doing? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing good. I, I can't complain. I'm sure you could. Well, I could complain. I could complain. I, I, I gave you my complaint this morning um, about people on the ride, on the road right now. They just, yeah, no, well, one, yeah, people are terrible. No, no one knows how to drive. I wonder if that's around the, so, so people who listen, who are not in new Orleans, do people in your city drive terrible? Cause in New Orleans, I think post COVID people forgot how to drive. It's not just driving terrible. It's a, it's a lack of respect for traffic laws, running red lights and stop signs and, it's you crazy. Your, your daughter even made comment of it this morning, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Grace and I we're in the sitting uh, at, at a light, and this guy decides to make a left turn from the right lane, cuts us off, and then makes a U turn and almost hits us. And and you know, Grace was appalled by it this morning. So mm. you know, it's just it's an unfortunate thing that we're going through right now. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. All right, so so today. We're going to talk about something that I, I've been talking, it seems like I've been talking a lot about this on a, on a regular basis, and it's liquidity. It doesn't sound like a, a fun topic to talk about, but man, having liquidity in your finances is, is huge. It, it, needs, it needs to be talked about. So what is liquidity? You know, let's, let's start there. Yeah, that's a, that's a good place to start. So what is liquidity, Xavier? So liquidity is those is is the assets that you can readily move to cash if you need to get your hands on it. You know, assets that if we if we move to cash, we're not looking at taxes on it. There's no fees to change those assets over to cash um, and no transaction cost. That's liquidity. Yeah. So so anything typically that can be converted to cash within three or four days. Like you said, we want to make sure that there's no penalties associated with it, that the cost to access it is, is, um, is fairly uh, low. And it's right. generally after tax dollars. We've already paid taxes on this money. Correct. So, and, and so some of those examples, and because I know people right now are sitting there thinking, okay, what type of vehicles? And some of those assets are going to be your savings account, your checking account, in some mm -hmm. cases, um, CDs, and and even some investments could be considered. So, so, let, hold on, let's, so let's, let's, let's slow down for a second. Let's slow down for a second. So um, savings and checkings, typically that money's right there. It's ready to be spent. Mm -hmm. CDs, you got you to gotta, you know, consider sometimes CDs might have some penalties associated with it. Typically, the penalties associated with CDs are, are relatively uh, nominal, but it just depends on the particular contract. So you got to be... Mm -hmm. uh, you got to be uh, careful. Uh, you got right. to be, gotta be that. careful about the CDs yeah, that yeah, you okay. that you carry. Um, yeah. You know, another another great example is is brokerage accounts. Um, you got just to after tax investment accounts. Yeah, correct, correct. Which again is is going to be readily. Uh, you know, you have access to those those assets if you need them. Yeah. Um, so, to, you know, in the, in the brokerage accounts, kind of a, a caveat here as well is you know you want to be you want to be cognizant of how that money's invested. Right, because if you got something mm -hmm. that's invested in, in something that's fairly volatile, um, not not all not all liquidity accounts are created equally, right? We have different liquidity events that we might need money for, so we want to be we want to make sure, and we're going to talk about this a little later in the episode, that we're matching our liquidity events, what we would possibly need the money for, with the type of account that that we have our liquidity in, right. So real real quick recap on that then is when we're looking at liquidity, we're looking at assets or we can count assets um, that we have that we have access to. And if we need cash, we can get that cash in in a yeah. in a matter of days. Yeah. So. And most people most people you might be thinking, okay, Eric and Xavier are talking about an emergency fund, right? I need a savings account that if, a, if an emergency happens. I can access some cash pretty quickly. And yes, emergency fund is part of part of your, you know, your, your, your liquid assets. But, but in um, a lot of the conversations that I've been having a lot lately, it's actually beyond the emergency fund. And we're going to get to that mm -hmm. here in a second, but certainly you want to have uh, having money on the side for an unexpected event, uh, a liquidity event, an emergency is incredibly uh, prudent. In fact, um, you know, you can look up, you can look up different 
kind of metrics that we want to make sure that we're, we're hitting in personal finance. And, and one, we don't talk about it in these terms necessarily, um, but liquidity ratio. So if you think of this idea of how much money do I need to get by monthly, right? Mm-hmm. So to cover my monthly expenses. And I'm, I'm not talking about my um, you know vacations and extra things. I'm talking about, man, I got bills to pay. I got debt to pay. Right. I, I, I got to eat. What does it cost on a monthly basis? And then how much do I have available in liquidity? And that ratio is, you know, we call liquidity ratio. So we take the cash that we have, liquid cash, divided by our monthly expenses. And that's essentially going to give you how many months of month monthly expenses can you carry yourself in the event mm-hmm. of emergency. So do I have three months? Uh, a lot of you have probably heard the rule of thumb, you know, three to six months of expenses you want set aside for, for an emergency. So yeah, the emergency fund is part of liquidity. But right. let's talk. Let's talk about why. Obviously, in the event of an emergency, um, it seems pretty obviously wh- obvious why liquidity matters. But I want to talk about three three situations where liquidity is a big deal and why why we need to be having these conversations. Mm-hmm. Well, and you know, I'll give you a, a, a quick story um, when it comes to liquidity. You know, everyone thinks like you like you just mentioned in an emergency. But it's it's taking care of those day to day expenses. You have to have something liquid so you have access to it. Yeah, you know, I've got a client, and and on an annual basis, one of the things that we're planning for is tuition. You know, come April of every year, he's paying whether it's you know high school or or you know tuitions or getting monies together for his son to go back to uh, go back to college. They pay for that all at one time. Rather yeah. than taking a loan out through the bank and paying that nine ten percent interest rate on it, they cut a check. Mm-hmm. That's liquidity for them. So they have those accounts to where they're putting money on the I'm side actually, and they're saving towards that. I'm actually going to put that put that to the side and say, um, y- yeah, that that's part. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, we're we're saving for a specific expense that we know we're going to have. Um, you know, th- think about liquidity. We kind of change the topic here mm-hmm. for a second. I don't know if you ever watch any of those. Uh, um, Alaskan homesteading shows. No, right? They, they got the, they got these cats that live up in Alaska, like in the middle of the wilderness, right? And it's like what they're snowed in eight months out of the year, mm-hmm. and they have like three months to to store up. I might be exaggerating. I don't, I don't know. It's just cold. It's cold for a really long time up there. So they got like three or four months to to grow all the food that they need, to do all the hunting, to do all the mm-hmm. fishing that they need to carry them throughout the you know the 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 cold snowy season where everyone's hibernating and nothing grows that that's liquidity right they're storing up to get them through uh this event that they need uh that they need this 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 food to carry them through right it's back in the day agricultural days they had big silos full of corn right people would store corn for 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 multiple seasons or multiple years just in case there was a bad harvest um we store up money we store up cash. We store up liquid assets, right? You can't. The, the the problem is if all your money's tied up in real estate, if all your money's tied up in your business asset, you can't just go turn that to cash overnight. And it's stressful. It, if in the event that you can't, people get stressed out. So, so having having liquidity, one of the things for having liquidity is yep. it's less stressful because you have options. It gives you options. A hundred, hundred percent. So let, let's stick with business. I know a lot of our listeners own, own businesses, man, when you own a business and you've got a little extra scratch in your, in your operating account, it's, it, it, you feel, you feel a little more confident, a little more comfortable mm-hmm. going into the month. Right? right. You're not as stressed out about like, oh my gosh, I remember when I first you know started, started the business and, and you have staff and you're like, okay, all right, what's payroll going to be this month? Am I going to have enough to meet payroll? Right, because you haven't had an opportunity to build mm-hmm. up some of those some of those liquid assets. So, um, when you have liquidity, when you, you first started, you had that convers. You were thinking about that, if I remember correctly. We just had that last week. We were talking about payroll, you know, and look <laughs> and looking at our liquidity needs. So it it's something that that's it's, consistently it's, out it, there. Exactly, it's ongoing. It's ongoing. And, and again, I talked about different liquidity events, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what you, what you want to do is you want to match liquidity events with, with liquid assets. And that's how I like to think about it in my mind. You know, if you've ever worked with me before, you hear me say you want to purpose your money. To me, that's matching 
liquidity events with with you know purposing your your mm-hmm. money, right? So I might have money set aside and what I call a work optional account that I wanted to start generating revenue or income for me at some point in the future. Um, to me, that money doesn't match up with a payroll liquidity event, or it doesn't match up for me, emergency fund, that money's purposed, it's invested, it's, it's stored, it's located in a different asset, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's go back to this idea of, of, of stress. So from a business standpoint, if I've got cash, if I've got operating capital in my business, I am looking at my business uh, um, challenges uh, very differently, right? I'm right. not... <laughs> I, I'm not forced to make panicky decisions that I other might otherwise might make if I didn't have capital. I remember talking mm-hmm. to a client years ago, a business owner. He was looking at pursuing another business opportunity. And this guy had taken his risk. He was making his money. He was supporting his lifestyle, saving. Everything that he was planning for, he, he was doing. He's an entrepreneur. Business opportunity presented itself to him. We had a conversation about it. And one of the things that we, one of the things that we do with with our clients is we like to provide that, especially our business owner clients, that thought partnership, help them think through business decisions. Right? We had a conversation. He had liquidity. He wanted to use all of his liquidity to pursue a new business venture. We talked about it. In the end, he decided not to do it because, man, if he tied up all his money in another business mm-hmm. venture and he had no more cash on the sidelines. It was going to create undue stress for him and his family that he didn't need. He didn't need that risk. He didn't need. He didn't need the return that the new business venture could have possibly provided for him. Now, I'm not saying don't pursue new business ventures. What I'm saying is, it allowed him to sit back and say, "Hey, do I need to take that risk?" He wasn't forced into a right. panicky decision. And in preparation for this, I started doing some research on small businesses and and you know cash flow budgeting. And one of the things that I did see is, according to the U.S. Bank. of small businesses fail because of a lack of cash flow, Mm -hmm. because of a lack of liquidity. Lack of liquidity. That's right. 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 And and that goes back to what you were just saying. If he would have pulled all of his liquid assets out and gone and started this other business, not only would that new business have been at jeopardy, but his current business could have been. Yeah, that was the question. That was that was that was the question that drove him to make that decision. My question to him was Mm -hmm. this. Because they would need to use this liquidity, and he would have had to have gotten uh, some more debt from the bank. Mm. Question I said was, if that business fails, is and you have to service that debt, is that going to impact everything that you've currently built? And his answer was yes. So, so what you're saying in is a reason to have liquidity is so that you have, excuse me, you have the means to pay debt in a short amount of time. But. Sure, possibly, yeah. Liquidity can look. So here's the other thing: if you have debt, and you hear me talk about, we talk about debt, debt being bad. Not all debt's bad. When you have liquidity, when you have cash available, debt becomes tolerable, especially especially lower interest rate debt. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, as a business owner, sometimes we need to borrow to expand our business. As as individuals, we need to borrow to buy houses to buy cars. I mean, it's really hard sometimes to pay cash for all this stuff. But when you have savings, it becomes much more tolerable. That debt becomes a whole lot easier to handle when you have liquidity. Mm -hmm. Now, Eric, you you mentioned one thing in there. Now I'm going out there and purchasing a house. Mm -hmm. So often I hear, well, I have assets. You know, I, I I can get money out of my real estate. I can get money out of my house. You know, do you consider that to be liquid assets? I mean, and I know it no, real, it, real, it, it real estate, real estate is not liquid. Okay. Now, if you have a lot of equity in your house, sure, you can go to the bank and get a home equity line of credit. Uh, but, it, but it takes, it takes time to go through that process. I mean, nowadays it could take three to three to six weeks uh, mm-hmm. on, on that. That's fast. So, right. so technically that's not liquidity. Now, if you have a line of credit, already established we we can we can debate whether that's liquidity or, or mm-hmm. not because it's it's debt but it's no different than going refinancing your house so that you have some some cash in the bank but the, the point is this when i have cash accessible to me i have less stress if i've got debt but i can cover that debt with cash assets or some form of liquid assets it's a whole lot less stressful it's more tolerable for me as a as a business owner 
as an individual. I mean, I mean we deal with hurricane season every year. Mm-hmm. I can tell you when my savings is higher, I am a lot less stressed about hurricane season because I'm not thinking about, oh crap, if we got to go, if we got to go rent a hotel somewhere, that's going to cost me $500,000. Every evacuation costs an X amount, but okay, I've got a bunch of savings. I'm not as worried about it. Right. If I've spent my savings down, uh, you know, I'm a little bit more stressed about it, a little bit more anxious mm-hmm. going into to hurricane season. If I got to cover a $10,000 deductible, <laughs> my savings is spent down, I'm a little bit more stressed. And, and hurricane season is uh, two months away, about two months away now. Yeah. So, yeah. so, <laughs> so, so having, having liquidity reduces stress. It help, it allows us to make better decisions when we know we've got the safety and security of, of some type of liquid mm-hmm. asset, some type of cash, All right? There's a story about when they built the Golden Gate Bridge. I mean, what it's like, I don't know, two, 400 feet above the, the San Francisco Bay, right? And halfway through the building of it, they constructed this safety net that ran below the entire deck of the bridge. And what was interesting was when they installed this safety net, the workers uh, were actually working faster and they actually finished the project ahead of time. And they, they deduced the reason is because, okay, they had more confidence because if they were, to, you know, if they were working fast and fell, they weren't going to die, right? They weren't going to plunge their death into the icy San Francisco Bay. So, so that safety net kind of in a sense was their liquidity. It provided them safety, provided them security, allowed them to, to be more confident as they worked, to be more focused as they worked and not have to have the stress of, of, uh, uh, or that fear of man, what happens if. I like that analogy. So my liquidity or my savings could potentially be my safety net in the event that anything happens or if I need cash to do whatever it is that I could do. So I'm not as stressed, less yeah. stress. So so the second reason why liquidity is important, kind of tied, tied to that a little bit, is mm-hmm. it allows us to be more efficient with our investments. Okay. If I have if I have sufficient liquidity, um, I can use my cash and purpose it for different for these different events. So so for example, um, emergency fund, hurricane evacuation, and you know what? I want that money super accessible. I want that boring sitting in my checking account and my savings account. I'm not really worried about um, not really worried about what my money can earn for me. Right. That that's that's purpose for it's like your example of I'm saving for tuition because I don't want to pay 18% interest on this loan. So I'm saving for tuition. Um, I keep that money in a savings account. I'm not worried mm-hmm. about earning interest on it. Right. So what that allows me, once I once I have solved for that liquidity event, that emergency, then I've got more cash or more liquid assets. I can say, you know what? I can take more risk with this. I can earn more on mm-hmm. this. Right. I can invest this other part because this is for a longer term purpose, a longer term need. So when I'm looking at being efficient with my investments, then, you know, one of the things that I recommend to people is let's look at how much cash you have on hand because too much cash isn't good. So we want to make sure that we're purposing that cash, as you said, for different things, maybe have some investments yeah. here, have my savings here. But again, too much cash is going to be bad for you. Yeah, I've seen. Look, I've seen this, and um, you might you might be listening to this right now, and this could this could be you. How many business owners, Xavier, have you seen that have operating uh, capital that is just far more than they need? It's it's multiple, mm. multiple, multiple, multiple payroll cycles, multiple uh, um, uh, times of of their expenses, and they just it's a hundred thousand, it's two hundred thousand. I've seen as much as half a million of working capital in businesses that's sitting in cash. Now, let me say this. You have you have options for your money. The option isn't invested in the stock market. We're talking options for your liquid money. The yeah. options are not invested in the stock market and sitting in a checking account. There's stuff in between. There's stuff that banks provide, that, that uh, financial advisors provide that is somewhere between stock market investments and just cash hard cash just mm-hmm. sitting in, in, in a vault at a bank, okay? There's something in between. So the, the point is this, if you still are up too much cash, you are impacting your ability to grow your net worth. You're not being efficient with your money. 
If you don't have any liquid assets, all your money is in, in real estate or your business entity, then you impact your ability to be able to, to concentrate, to continue to grow your net worth because you're, because you're mired in stress and anxiety, right? Right. So when you have these liquid event, the, the, the liquidity, oh man, you could be, you could be more efficient. And you talked, you brought mm -hmm. something up earlier and I want to address it here real quick about efficiency with investments. You talk about um, having equity in your house. So here's what's cool. When you have liquidity, you can actually collateralize that liquidity in some cases. Now, what I mean by that, there's some investment accounts. I'm not saying that this is for everybody, okay? I talked about having enough liquidity mm -hmm. um, allows you to cover debt and, and make you more comfortable, make debt more tolerable. There's some cases where you, if you have enough cash or enough investments, you can actually borrow against those. So you have the cash, you have the, you have the asset to back up the debt. And why would you want to do that? Because you continue to allow your investments grow efficiently, right? I've got the, I got the asset that I can pay off the debt if I need to, but at the same time, I don't want to have to liquidate this because I might have taxes. I might have um, uh, a lot of capital gains that, man, I just don't want to realize right now. Now you mentioned tax planning and capital gains, and, and that brings up another question that, um, that we hear and that we discuss on a regular basis as well, is when we look at liquidity, we've got to come back and, and review those retirement plans because we don't want too much cash tied up inside those plans because of the tax consequences when we begin to pull those out. Yeah, we should have mentioned this earlier, but you're right. So first, let me say this. Retirement accounts are not liquidity, okay? They're not liquid. They're expensive to access. You're going to be penalized. And in most cases, you're going to pay um, ordinary income taxes on it, and you, you want to avoid that. Okay, so- Here's what you're talking about. When you have liquidity, when you build liquidity, we know your earning, your, your peak earning years are going to be when you're 40, 40 to 60, or those are going to be your peak earning years. Okay. If you have spent time building up liquidity to your peak earning years, remember, typically your liquidity is going to be after tax accounts. We talk about retirement planning all the way, all the time, take advantage of retirement accounts. Yes, we want to take advantage of retirement accounts. But if we could take more advantage, of, particularly for our business owners, if we could take more advantage of our retirement accounts when we're making a lot of money, um, we can become very creative in how we do that from a, from a saving standpoint with different types of qualified retirement accounts, pension funds, and, and such. Right. But if we don't have liquidity, then we can't allocate all our money to these accounts that are going to help us bring our tax brackets down because we don't have any liquidity. We're going to have to spend all our discretionary money to build up our savings or, or to, mm -hmm. to, to, you know, um, to build up our, our liquidity. Right. And, and that goes back to growing your net worth. You know, what are you doing for that net worth and building those retirement accounts? I mean, look, when I turn 65, 67 years old, whatever that retirement age is going to be, and I start drawing down those retirement accounts, I want some tax-free income as well. Yeah, and that so, liquidity is going to allow me to have that accessibility. So what you're talking about is asset location. Okay. We Correct. don't want to locate yes. all of our assets in illiquid things or retirement accounts. Correct. Because when it's time to start spending that money down, it becomes very expensive. And you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you don't have, you don't have, you reduce your number of options to uh, minimize your taxes. But when we have assets in different types of, when they're located in different types of accounts, after tax accounts, some retirement mm -hmm. accounts, uh, Roth accounts, um, real estate rental income, we're able to get more creative with, with how we take our income and therefore manage our taxes as we, as we get older. Right. Well said, Eric. I like it. Well, thank you. Thank you, Xavier. I, I do do this for a living. <laughs> so, all right. So, <laughs> go ahead. No, go, go ahead. Finish no, no, what no, you're no. saying. You, you know, I, I, could, I could see it in your face. You were going to say something that was just super wise. So one of the, one of the and, and I was just recently reading this, is people start looking at ways to be able to do this. And one of the recommendations that I, that I have is you want to sit down with your, with your certified financial planner, with, with your financial advisor, and walk through. Let that individual look at where you currently are, what are you doing, and, and what is a more efficient way to begin saving, to begin building that net worth up. 
do you have enough liquidity? You know? Yeah. I'm going to say this. If you are a high income earner or a business owner, um, you, you will, uh, the cost that you pay for a financial planner, um, will, will be far below the value that you're going to get when it comes to just this, this is just one topic alone that we deal with, with clients alone in terms of asset location. How do you build uh, liquidity, setting timelines to your cash needs? I talked about this earlier, right? Let's match mm-hmm. up liquidity events. What are, what are reasons why we need cash? Um, an emergency uh, to pay for tuition, um, to buy the building that I'm renting right now for my business. Cause there's some, some good tax benefits to that. There's some good reasons to do that. So we, we, we need to build liquidity to come up with down payments. You're buying commercial property. You have a much higher down payment that you need to come up with. Um, other liquidity events. Um, one heck, of the big I'm ones. To- so we, we actually had a podcast on one earlier. Um, we talked about weddings, you know, I I've got, I've got two girls. So one of the things that, that I begin planning for is, do we have liquid assets to help pay for that wedding? Yeah, you know, do you, uh, exactly. And then what I was going to bring up was um, a big, a big liquidity event is the eventuality of retirement or, or let me, let me say this semi-retirement. Yeah. Because I think the traditional idea of I'm just going to stop working and, and don't do anything. I, I don't, yes, we still plan for that, but most people I talk to like what they do in some way, mm-hmm. especially the business owners. That I that I work with, they're passionate about the work that they do. That's why I call the work optional account. Man, I may get to a point where I am done with the grind of operating, you know, uh, my um, insurance agency. Done operating. You work a lot with pharmacy. I'm done mm-hmm. operating. I like it. I'm passionate about it. It's a good living. I don't want out, but man, I don't want. 45, 50, 60 hours a week in. Right. So if we have funded what I call our work optional liquidity account, guess what we can do? Yeah, I could back down to 10, 15, maybe 20 can, hours a I week. I can back down. I can back down. I can go pay someone. I can go hire uh, a COO to operate my business mm-hmm. for me, to do the things that I no longer want to do, but I, but I know are important. So a good financial planner, a good financial advisor can help you start to match up pots of money, liquid assets with those liquidity events and not just help you match it up. A good financial planner is going to keep you accountable to that. Accountability, Uh, that accountability partner. Because we're talking about long-term financial plans. It is really hard for us to think long-term. We are such instant, we're such an instant gratification culture that if we don't have somebody helping us in all facets of life, looking beyond just today, Right. We see it with our kids, right? We raise our kids mm-hmm. all day long. I'm like, oh my God. Right. If if we weren't there as parents to help them like, you know, plan beyond, you know, the next three hours, where would they end up? Same, same thing with with us, especially, especially the more complicated our lives are with our businesses and with our finances, the more important it is to have someone helping us make these decisions, helping us align our money, purpose our money with these liquidity events. Um, so this to me right now, liquid, this is, this is like, this is a theme that I'm on right now. I've been talking a mm-hmm. lot about this and having liquidity to me is, um, is, is one of the most important things that we can be talking about right now, because so many people our savings rates in this country is down. So many people, we make money and they go spend it, right? Cause we want the things that money can buy. But if we show a little bit of restraint, a little bit of delayed gratification, and we build up liquidity. That's a good thing. That allows us. Look, you, you know, I hate on Dave Ramsey um, every now and then. There's there's some things that really drive me crazy. There's one thing that Dave Ramsey says that I absolutely love. He says, "Live like nobody else today, so that you can live like nobody else tomorrow." Live like nobody else today, right? Most people aren't telling themselves no. People with a lot of mm-hmm. money, they're spending it. They're buying big houses. They're buying big cars. I'm not saying live like a pauper, but you can, you, you understand what I'm saying. You know, they're not taking the most expensive vacations, right? They're saving. They're right. they're disciplining themselves. Why? Because one day, they're gonna have a stockpile of this liquid money that's that's generating more income for them. And guess what they're gonna be able to do? 
They're going to live life like no one else. You're going to still be it, grinding it out in your business. And I'm going to say, dude, I'm working from the beach for the next three months. One thing that sticks in my mind now is if you can't buy it twice, don't buy it. Billy Williams. I love it. And I, and I live by that now. If I can't yeah. buy it twice, don't buy, don't it. buy it. Right. All right, man. What I'll, I'll, I'll give you the closing thoughts. I get, fi I get fired up and I get on these rants and I don't know. <laughs> That, and, and that was, that that is my closing thought. If you can't buy it twice, don't buy it. Liquidity is great. You need it. It allows you to live stress-free and it allows you to be able to do the things that you want to do in a short amount of time. You can pay that debt. So think about it. Sit down with your financial advisor, your financial planner, talk to them. Make sure that, that your strategy is in line with what your goals are. Cool. Thanks, man.